Toward the end of 2020, what a year, I decided to give up alcohol completely. This came after a very, 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 very heavy night of drinking that I woke up from feeling like death. Like a lot of people, 2020 was a struggle and I was very, very lucky I wasn't on the front line. I have very little to complain about actually, other than the fact I was in a living situation I wasn't particularly happy about and work was very slow. Like a lot of people, I wasn't happy and I used alcohol as a crutch and a blanket to kind of shield me through the days, the weeks, the months and every COVID-19 talk with Boris Johnson saying you must stay inside but go outside, but stay inside, but go outside. It was a confusing time and I became more dependent on alcohol than I ever had been before. So I just decided enough was enough. I always forget to put my phone on silent. My dramatic enough was enough, let's do it again. Enough was enough. I stopped drinking. At first it was really tough. Although, having said that, I was weaning myself off of alcohol during a pandemic when things were closing and opening and closing and opening again. So I wasn't in a typical atmosphere to quit drinking because pubs and things weren't permanently open and social events were more staggered. We were coming to the end of the Zoom quiz era and I just found it probably a lot easier than if somebody were to be giving up alcohol now. Like, I think I would struggle more now. Obviously it has been nearly three years since I have been teetotal and I have found it was different when we started coming out of lockdown because obviously more people wanted to go to the pub, more people wanted to socialise and have a drink and that was when it became a real sort of significant life change because something that had been something for me who just sat at home and not having drinks, it was a very private decision, but then when the world started to properly open up, it suddenly became a decision that the world had to know about. What I found really interesting during this time and during research I was doing into alcoholism was one in 14 adults depend on alcohol. And that is a lot of people. And alcohol is legal, it's a legal substance here in the UK, along with quite a few places in the West. And I still find that quite overwhelming. I don't want to be a killjoy. I appreciate when somebody wants to drink for fun and for social reasons, but it also is an addiction that kind of has become part of the modern experience. And I don't think that's healthy or productive for anybody. I just wanted to lay out some things that definitely helped me through my sobriety journey and I would love to hear yours too so if you do have any pop them down in the comments and we can definitely talk about them. In my opinion the first step to sobriety is telling yourself why you want to do this. What are your reasons? Are your reasons because of your family, because of money, because of your health, because you just hate hangovers? What is your reason to quitting drinking or at least limiting your alcohol consumption? There are so many reasons why somebody might quit or reduce their alcohol intake. It isn't just because they're alcoholics. I get a lot of questions when I tell people that I am teetotal, they always give me that little look like, oh, have you been to an AA meeting? Not everyone who quits drinking is an alcoholic or was an alcoholic or has ever been an alcoholic. It's a personal choice and I think writing down your reasons is a really good idea and a good way of staying on track of your teetotal or sober journey. One thing I realised very early on into my sobriety journey was I was not an alcoholic and I have never been an alcoholic. According to Drink Aware, alcoholism is when someone depends on alcohol and craves it and needs it in their life. And that wasn't me, that's never been me. I reached for it in social situations, I very rarely had a drink on my own except during lockdown when we were all doing Zoom quizzes and I realised I wasn't an alcoholic, so I needed different support and different help in my sobriety journey than somebody who was an alcoholic because they need much more support and nurturing through the process and it is a medical 
situation and addiction should be taken seriously and it is not always that person's fault and it should be dealt with with care and compassion. Personally, I think knowing that I wasn't an alcoholic helped me through because I knew that this was something I could overcome on my own and it was to do with discipline and the mental state I was in rather than a medical need for alcohol. Please do, if you think you need any extra help, please seek medical help and advice. I am not a doctor. I am not a professional. As always, I will pop some links down below. That might help you through your sobriety journey if you think alcohol is a bit more of a problem for you. Developing a plan to become sober is such an important goal. I didn't develop a plan early on and I didn't tell anybody about my sobriety journey because we were in lockdown, things were closed, so I kept it very private. When things started to reopen, I also lied a bit about my sobriety. I would pretend to be drinking alcohol when actually it was a mocktail or, you know, it was 0% beer. And that wasn't helpful, that didn't keep me on track. I think having a plan for your journey really helps and I think telling people your intentions really helps. I lost quite a few friends, friends, when I quit drinking because I realised our friendship was only surrounded by drink. We didn't do anything non-alcohol related. It was always going to the pub, going to clubs, going to the park and drinking tinnies because we were classy. <laughs> It was never any proper deep connections and I felt like those people were quite a negative influence in my life because they were the ones that always wanted to drink. They were the ones that always wanted to get completely plastered and not having them in my life has benefited my health and my mental health massively. So I think telling people that you are going to become sober is a good plan because the people that genuinely love you and genuinely want you to be okay, yes, they might joke about it, but ultimately they accept and approve of your decision for yourself and they will love you no matter what. The people that don't are the people that just want you there as a vessel of fun rather than an interesting and sensitive human being that you are. So are you really missing out on that friendship? Probably not. As I've said, seeking professional help is so important. There are so many support groups online. We've all heard of Alcoholics Anonymous, but there are so many. You can also go to talks and you can go to seminars and you can go to classes and you can do all these different things that are there to support you through this journey. You don't have to be an alcoholic to go to these things. You might feel maybe a bit disconnected from other people's journeys because if they are an alcoholic they will have a very different journey to you if you are not but it is refreshing to be in a room full of people who are sharing this this journey to sobriety because all of our journeys look different anyway in life but this one joins us together and we all have this ultimate goal of living this sober and clear journey and I think there's something really special about that. My last piece of advice is by far my favourite. Celebrate your successes. Quitting drinking in the modern Western world is an accomplishment and you should be praised for it. Drinking can be a great way to make friends, it can be a great way to socialise, it can be a great way to learn and meet new people, but it can also be a really, really toxic environment and you don't need it. Our bodies don't need alcohol like we need water or food or sunshine or any of those things. Giving up, if you have any sort of dependency on it, should be praised because that is an accomplishment. But that isn't to say you have to get to a year, two years, three years, a decade to praise yourself for not drinking. If you haven't had a drink in a week and you feel proud of yourself, that is valid and if you haven't had a drink for a month that is also valid if you slip up and have a drink after two three four five ten weeks that's okay that doesn't rewrite all the progress you've made it just means you start over start afresh and carry on maybe try and make it a longer period that you haven't had a drink your successes are so important and recognizing them is valid. Whether you want to say it to someone or you want to write it down or have a sobriety journal or you want to have a group of friends who are all sort of on this sobriety journey together, it is important and your successes are 
incredible, no matter how small or great or grand or insignificant they might be. Quitting drinking is a journey and it can be difficult. You might slip up, you might change your mind and you might come back to it, but it's okay. I think just recognizing if there might be a problem or maybe you wanna cut back, maybe you don't want to be sober for the rest of your life, but you want to be sober for a month. You don't have to wait till dry January to have a dry month. Personally, since quitting drinking, I have slept better, my skin's been better, I have felt better in myself. I've also gained days back. I would go days on one hangover. I'd lose days and life's too short. And personally, I feel glad that I've gained those days back. I get up in the mornings refreshed, mostly. And I'm really glad I made this decision for myself. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're all okay on your different journeys, whether that's in sobriety or something else. Life can be stressful. So give yourself some credit and give yourself a little, a little hug if you need it. If you're new here, my name is Becca and I talk about all sorts of different things that interest me, that affect me, that have affected me. And I'm just really curious about the world. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please do hit subscribe. If you aren't new here, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know how you're getting on in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Have a lovely day, have a lovely life. So much love to you, goodbye. Oh, end of credits, fam, I did it. Again, oh, ouch, my leg is so dead. This time I was actually sitting on my knees because if I didn't, I'd be down here. This is me sat on the floor. <laughs> you Do you like my slippers? Very nice. I hope you're all okay. Um, thank you so much. I love that in the comments you put end of credits fam. That makes me so happy. I think we all need like, a badge or something. Oh my leg. Anyway, <laughs> I will see you all in the next one. I hope you're all well. I will see you in the comments. Lots of love. Bye.